Hey everybody, welcome back to the Vince Lano Podcast. Today I am doing another mini-episode. Uh, now this particular uh, subject I'm going to be covering was supposed to be a full episode, uh, but then after I sat down and planned it out, I realized that the subject I'm about to cover, it, it, it does not constitute a full episode. So uh, in keeping with last week, I'm going to be uh, doing a mini episode, but I promise uh, full length episodes will be coming back very soon, very soon. Um, so uh, for a while, I have been hinting at a scoop that I got about Moana 2. And it's been it's been particularly shocking to me that that someone would reach out to me about the movie. Um, especially since th there are plenty of other people out online who have much bigger followings um, in this space um, who, who you could report this information to. Um, and uh, someone decided to reach out to me, uh, which I'm grateful, but uh, it's it's a little it's a little odd. It's a little a little bit of an unexpected situation. Uh, but nevertheless, I'm grateful for the opportunity to have this information and present it to you. Um, I have to stress, I have no way of verifying this source and their information. Uh, all they told me was that they have connections to Disney. I have no idea what that means. And I, again, I, I cannot verify this information in any way. So, as they always say, take it with a grain of salt. This could be complete and utter BS. It could be true. Uh, and there are things in here that lead me to believe that it could very well be true. That's why I'm even talking about it. Um, but uh, yeah, let's get into it. So I was reached out to very shortly after doing my last episode where I covered Moana 2, which was episode 79. Uh, somebody reached out to me, uh, DM'd me, saying, Hey, I have some information uh, with about Moana 2 that I'd like to share with you. Again, why me? I don't know. <laughs> um, but let me just read you guys the message, and then we'll break all of this down in full. So we had a little tit-for-tat just about information private stuff and all that i i want to keeping this want to keep the source anonymous that, that is their desire so we'll not be revealing information about that um but, but uh, this is where the message starts where he's telling me about information about moana 2 and disney most of the information you presented was accurate but here are a few additional tidbits it did start as a five episode disney plus series I'm not sure about the Disney Plus content explanation, but one of the biggest reasons for, for it becoming theatrical was because they pulled the plug on a feature that was scheduled to come out in November of 2024, and they needed something to fill that slot. The director was from live action and was reportedly very difficult to work with. She fired her head of story and her original lead editor quit after one internal screening. Some say it was a nightmare. Moana 2 had been looked upon as a solid project, as a low-budget five-episode series, and there was some talk about making it a theatrical release late last year, that being 2023. I think Disney execs were worried about the 2024 movie early on and wanted Moana 2 as a backup. After Wish underperformed, they really looked hard at the slate. The 2024 feature was not improving and was far too woke. So they decided Moana 2 was their best bet, and the safest chance at the box office. The five-episode Disney Plus series was pretty generic. It felt like a Saturday morning cartoon. Moana had some wacky friends, and the plot felt like a retread of the first movie. It allegedly had some songs. Most of them were pretty bland, lacking Lin-Manuel Miranda's signature flair. The series was going to be a lot of work to make it ready for theatrical. Regarding the cast, Ali'i Cravalho and Dwayne Johnson were hired, but their contract was for an episodic series. Maui's role was originally very, very small in the series. When the project became theatrical, 
Disney had to renegotiate Ali Cravalho and Dwayne Johnson's contracts. Dwayne Johnson held out for a while, but eventually he signed on, and Maui's role was greatly expanded. As you speculated, Disney is working overtime, crazy hours, to try and finish Moana 2 on time. Originally, the Moana series was going to be animated in the new Vancouver studio, but now half the work is being done in Burbank. And since the initial 2024 November feature has been pulled, everybody has free time to work on the film. Disney has redone about 95% of the story, and even replaced most of the songs, but still no Lin Memo Miranda. This source is particularly bummed that Lin Memo Miranda is not a uh, part of the movie, uh, which goes to show how much they enjoyed uh, his contribution to Moana, which I agree. I think his songs are absolutely fantastic. I actually have the uh, Moana soundtrack in my car, and uh, I, I'd be lying if I said I didn't put it in every now and then and uh, listen to it on my way to work. With the overhaul turning the series into a movie, it is allegedly a lot better. I can understand why the teaser they released was so light on content. So many changes had happened so recently, literally in the past few weeks before releasing the trailer, and they just haven't had enough time to animate them. What follows here is um, the source's comments on Disney learning their lesson about wokeness. Um, this is more of a, a personal take that they have, but uh, I think it's, there's some interesting tidbits in here. I like to think Disney has learned their lesson on the woke and political agendas. Most of this started under Chapek, although Iger is to blame too. The woke, anti-conservative bandwagon really kicked into high gear during COVID, and Jennifer Lee really embraced it. If Strange World was the woke pendulum swinging as far woke as possible, Wish was their attempt to swing it back in the opposite direction, with the real villain, talking animals, and fun songs, etc. If anybody has applied political messages to the film, it reportedly was not their intention. The only woke elements that were intentionally integrated into the film were the multiracial cast. There's a lot of rumors and reports about whether or not Iger is going to double down on the wokeness, but I've heard that both Iger and Jennifer Lee on the Disney animation side are trying to reverse course on the wokeness. Okay, that's everything that this source said. And again, I can't verify this information. I have nothing to go off of. No way to say if this is true or not. It's just a random source. Saw my podcast and decided that I was worth telling this information to. Um, so let's start out with what they said about uh, kind of confirming things I speculated on in that previous episode. Um, so yes, we all know, and it's been widely reported, this did start out as a five-episode Disney Plus series. That's not anything new. What I didn't know is that this movie was replacing a film that was coming out in 2024, November, that was supposed to basically come out the day that Moana 2 has now. As far as what that movie is, the plot, the story, the characters, we're probably never going to know. I find it very interesting, though, that uh, it was a live-action director, a woman, um, based on uh, this message. Um, it sounds like a horrible situation. It had a story fired, original lead editor quit after one internal screening. That's not a recipe for, uh, for greatness. Uh, and I'm assuming that this movie has been canceled uh, outright, and we'll, we'll, it will never see the light of day. Maybe one of those... Uh, Twitter accounts that, that uh, release lost media will we'll dig this up somehow. We'll get to see what this was, but um, maybe it's best to stay in the Disney vault. Who knows? Uh, so I, I, I think it's interesting that the series was going to be more in the vein of a Saturday morning cartoon as opposed to a proper sequel to Moana, uh, to which I say props to Disney for trying to overhaul this movie to be theatrical ready and a worthy successor to the original Moana, I would have preferred that they actually gone into proper production and start from, in a, pro in a proper sense, start developing Moana 2 with a full, you know, two and a half year, three year uh, production to, to give us a movie that will truly be worth 
the name Moana too, because Moana, at least in my humble opinion, is one of the greatest animated movies Disney's ever made. Endlessly entertaining, super fun, great message for kids, um, fantastic music. Like it has all the hallmarks of classic Disney. And it, it, honestly, I love the portrayal of the Polynesian culture. It just such, it's such a fun movie, such a fun movie. And well edited too. So in, in that previous episode, I also talked about um, the possibility that Ali Cravalho and Dwayne Johnson weren't even cast in the series. And that they, they had the fact they had to renegotiate or negotiate new contracts or I thought it was weird that Dwayne Johnson and Ali Cravalho weren't even in talks to be in the movie. Um, but the reason why is not because they were never involved. The reason is because they were signed, their contract was for a series. They had signed for a certain amount of episodes and they were going to be paid a certain amount for those episodes. Dwayne Johnson specifically, it sounds like he had a really small role in the series. I imagine he may have only been in one episode. That's just my speculation. If the if the series is being turned into a movie now, well, it makes sense from a business perspective. You have to renegotiate. That's, that's new work. They can't just... I mean, I'm sure they've reused some things, but it seems like 90... I mean, this, this uh, message says 95% of the story has been overhauled and changed, so... I don't know how much they would have actually taken from the original concept of the series and um, put it into the, the now movie version. So it makes sense that Dwayne Johnson and Lee Cravalho uh, were just signed for this. Now, it also, again, doesn't take away from the fact that it's a little concerning that they've rushed all this, but they've rushed all this because they canceled the film and they've now replaced this with another film. Uh, they don't. Again, I don't love that. I would have maybe preferred if they had had something that's a little further down the pipeline and shifted that into the 2024 slot. Maybe Zootopia 2. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's not as far along as we think, given the fact that it. Uh, they we just got first footage at D23, but I'm just coming as a as a huge fan of Moana, wanting to see the sequel get a proper like start to finish process of being made as opposed to being rushed into it like this, like it is now. Um, the, it, it notes that the series had some wacky friends that joined Moana on her journey in the series, which I think is uh, that, that uh, trio that we see the, the younger guy, the old guy and the, and the, and the little girl who are um, on Moana's ship, which seems like, I don't know, like Moana has a little sister and she has this younger, younger girl who, you know, is probably going to be like a figure that looks up to Moana. Having two characters like that, I'm not sure how that's going to, going to translate. I just don't, I mean, as I'm breaking this down, I don't know if this movie's going to be as good as Moana 1. And I guess, I, I guess I, I will brace myself for that now, that this was probably not going to be the hit that Moana, the first Moana was. Will it make a lot of money at the box office? God willing. I mean, hey, look, Inside Out 2, I thought was a great movie. Was it better than the first movie? Was it mind-blowingly like best Pixar movie ever top 10? I don't think so. It was great. It was really good, but I, I didn't think it exceeded what came before it as far as the first Inside Out made a, over a billion dollars and, and climbing to this day. I think I read somewhere today it's going to it's going to pass the Lion King the the remake for uh box office gross, which is exciting. Uh so anything's possible. If Moana 2 just is a decent movie, uh, that that could be enough to drive the box office bonkers. I mean, I know people in my family are definitely looking forward to uh Moana too. I have some nieces and nephews who are going to go nuts over this thing. So just to touch on briefly um, what this person says, it looks like it's kind of a mix of, of their personal opinion and actual information they've gathered from Disney about uh, the inner workings. But they say Disney has learned a lesson on wokeness and political agendas uh, that it started under JPEG allegedly. 
which I, I don't know what to think about JPEG. It, it seems like he had the best intentions initially and got lost in translation, but then there are people who say that he didn't really know what he was doing. Um, and of course, as I've said before, I think Iger is what got us in this boat and he has not really done a lot to get us out of this boat uh, in recent months. But I think based on this behind the scenes, whether they want it to happen or not, Iger is reversing course and he wants to get things back to normal. And whether Jennifer Lee wants to do this too, I mean, this email also uh, specifies that she really embraced the wokeness and the um, political agendas culminating in Strange World and then trying to reverse course with Wish, which I guess explains why the movie was allegedly such a mess. And based on this message, I'm actually going to re I'm going to watch Wish. I, I avoided it. Uh, I'm going to give it a shot. We'll see if it's good. Um, if this person is right and Iger is reversing course, um, then what I've been saying has been true. We just have to, we just have to wade through the storm. There's going to be some bad movies that come out this year and next year. There's going to be some overtly woke content that we're just going to have to grit our teeth through. But change is coming, apparently. We have to wait and see. We got, uh, you know, from Marvel, we got the new Avengers movies. We got Daredevil Born Again. And, and uh, as, as I've covered in a previous episode, Kevin Feige is already apparently locked the step trying to reverse course. And maybe this is a mandate across the, con the country, across the company that uh, is just like an unspoken, out, un unspoken, outspoken thing uh, that everyone is reversing course on wokeness. Uh, we'll see. I, I, I remain optimistic as always. Uh, this is just a, a weird turn of events that the, this uh, person decided to reach out to me of all people. And again, I'm very, very grateful to the source um, and uh, appreciate the opportunity to present this information to you guys. So take that what you take with that what you will. Um, so yes, as far as Moana 2 goes, I'm still excited. Uh, I stand by my my comments that the, the second trailer did a lot to get me excited. I think that there is at least a attempt to make a really good story. I think the uh, inclusion of Moana's sister is quite uh, a heartfelt inclusion. Uh, it's enough to get me um, invested. I'm curious to see how Moana plays into this. Or, excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how Maui plays into this. Uh, I also saw a leaked image today that showed the villain of Moana 2, who is a woman who controls the weather. I think it's cool that they actually have like a, a person playing a, the villain instead of just a, uh, I don't know, like a, uh, nothing, nothing against Tefiti or not Tefiti. Um, oh gosh, the lava monster. I'm forgetting the lava monster's name. Gosh. And I call myself a Moana fan. <laughs> um, it's nice to have a, a villain who's at, who, who is human who is probably going to challenge Moana and Maui thematically on some level. Uh, I like villains who try to get personal with the with the characters and they represent sort of an opposition or an exact opposite um, of the main character. Uh, just you know, thematically, it's 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 a uh, it's thematically pleasing to me. You know, I'm all about themes. I'm all about characters. Now, character interactions and character um, relationships clash and make people better, make people worse, or set them on certain paths. I mean, as a filmmaker, I eat that up. So I, I have high hopes going into Moana 2. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. And this movie, this movie, this message does a lot to make me um, even more excited than I was and hopeful that Disney really is course correcting and that in a couple of years we may actually see Disney escape this era of wokeness and embrace doing what they've done best for years before which is just entertaining us with the best stories with some of the greatest storytellers of all time that's all we want from Disney and I am hopeful that that era will return to us once more.
And that's all we got for this uh, little mini episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. Again, full episodes are coming back very soon. Uh, I had um, Steve Baker's third part of our Dune discussion coming up very soon. And then uh, after this, I'm probably going to take a break from talking about Disney. I feel like I've been doing that nonstop. I mean, unless something in the news comes out about Disney, of course, I'll talk about it. But uh, it's just been a very Disney heavy couple months. Uh, so and I think it's time to pump the brakes on that a little bit. If you guys like this content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, and like this video. Give me a comment below what you think of the scoop and what your thoughts are on uh, Disney potentially changing course and all this new information on Moana 2. Also, if you want to subscribe to my podcast on audio format, I'm available on Spotify, Apple, and pretty much wherever you listen to podcasts. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. God bless and peace out. Thank you.